Hello everyone, I've built quite a few of these piston guns in the past and you might have seen a video or two about them but I've never really explained how they work so here we go but before we explain how these in particular work let's go back a bit to a slightly simpler design this is essentially my recreation of what I think is the first piston gun ever made by Elysius in 2018 or something I've only seen a YouTube video I don't think it was ever on the workshop and well it has this piston here and that's of course the most crucial part if we extend it we can see this landing gear, the gear here locks and since the piston has a super high force this only works on PC in experimental mode by the way uh, otherwise you can't set this force high enough and then it doesn't work because of this super high force you can just retract the piston despite it pretty much being locked by this landing gear which is still locked as you can see and if we now unlock the landing gear the whole thing just snaps forward and this is essentially just the mechanism with which we can launch stuff the piston head wants to be where the piston is the piston is here the piston head is there so it just snaps towards the piston now i've made two timers uh, first one unlocks the landing gear, triggers the next one, and the second one just unlocks this merge block. For some reason this needs to be on a subgrid, I don't really know why, but this is just a rotor, there's nothing fancy about that. So, let's launch it, and there you go, it just flies off. But as you can see, it's super slow, super weak. <laughs> I didn't really try to improve this in any way, and to be honest, it was initially never really that popular because they are just better clang guns and this is this is just kind of weak you also can't put it on a, on a ship because it just totally freaks out everything so for a long time pretty much nothing happened and then in 2020 some chinese dude just comes along and releases this monstrosity with three massive clang guns in here and let me look inside there's a ton of pistons stacked on top of each other and it even has this weird setup here with two rotors that are actually attached to this rotor head here both of these rotors are attached to the same rotor head and that is the magical trick to break the speed limit I'm going to explain how that works in a minute uh, let's test this out real quick first so I don't know how he did it but you can see everything is in Chinese <laughs> and Somehow he figured out how to make these piston guns way more effective and at the same time that sounds sketchy. At the same time also break the speed limit. It's been a long time trying to reverse engineer this. It's pretty difficult if everything is in Chinese. <laughs> so the basic principle of this is essentially the same. We still have pistons, this time two stacked on top of each other. And we still have something to attach and detach it. This time it's not a landing gear, but a rotor instead. Um, it just is a bit more reliable, but uh, that is pretty much the same. It's also a rotor here now. Um, this basically makes this gun way more stable and it allows you to put it on a ship and not just as a station. And also copy this double rotor trick from the Chinese dude. <laughs> Which allows this gun to break the speed limit. Let me demonstrate that real quick. As you can see, it's pretty fast. So how does this work? How does it break the speed limit? Well, essentially, the speed limit doesn't apply to subgrids. Subgrids can just break the speed limit by default and they sort of have their own speed limit which is 1060 meters per second all of this stuff it's all just subgrids and everything here can just break the speed limit however once you detach the projectile normally it should get set back to the speed limit but because it is attached through two rotors connected to the same rotor head the game still thinks that it's a subgrid after you've detached it by just shooting this with the Gatling gun. So if I shoot just somewhere into the... Oh wait, let me have an idea how to show this. Um, 
Should I take these blocks to show them on the hut? Oh, I think we need an antenna too. There we go. And then fire. You can see there's still a mahat, but there's no antenna on here. And the reason why there's still a mahat is because they're still part of the ship. There's six warheads in the terminal, and now they disappeared. The reason um, why they disappear here is actually because they are like remotely detonated. And I, I made a timer for that to remote detonate them after like four kilometers. The reason for that is if they get too far away, essentially it crashes your game because the game has to load a ton of asteroids and just everything between the projectile and the gun. It has to load more and more stuff and eventually you just run out of RAM and the game crashes. That's that's the, the only problem with this double rotor attached to the same uh, rotor head um, exploit. But yeah, essentially it just keeps the projectile a subgrid of this gun and subgrid can break the speed limit. It's really quite simple. Now because of these problems I made a new version and for this one I actually used two hinges that connect to the same hinge head. So the red one is the hinge head and then this grey one and the white one these are the hinges. Because you can't actually place them in the same spot I had to place one of the hinges uh, on a, another subgrid, uh, which is like, connected by these rotors here, so um, all of this is, is one grid, right? The hinge and stuff, and then this is another grid. And both of these hinges are attached to the same hinge head. Everything else is essentially the same. There's three pistons now, so it's a bit faster. And the cool thing about this is that you can actually detach one of the hinges. Uh, let me see if I can find the timers here. Yeah, it actually detaches both hinges. And then after like a tick or so later, it attaches them again. And what this does is that it essentially turns the projectile into its own grid. So if I go in the entity list here, you can see right away it turns into its own grid. And it's a bit faster, which is also cool. <laughs> and yeah, this just pre prevents the game from crashing, prevents all this nasty stuff that happens um, if you use two rotors. So that was a bit of an improvement. And then also made a large grid version, and this time it actually uses two pistons. Which I think is the most elegant solution because a piston is long enough that you can just extend it through another piston. And both of these pistons just attach to the same piston head. Uh, sadly, the piston doesn't have an attach button, so you need to do it with a small uh, script. Where is it? There is a really small script. All it does is just attach the piston and detach it so that, again, the game doesn't crash. And for some reason, if you turn the projectile into a into its own grid again, uh, after it has already broken the speed limit, then it can just stay above the speed limit. I don't really know how that works, um, but the only way like the game resets it... That's powerful. <laughs> The only way the game resets it to the speed limit is if it has thrusters or a cockpit, I think. And you could actually accelerate this projectile even further after it has left the gun with the artificial mass blocks and gravity generators. Oh yeah, and as with the first design that I made, this one also has all of the pistons between two rotors which allows it to be placed on ships, and it doesn't completely freak them out. You can just freely, freely fly around. But it does have quite a bit of recoil. So if I turn off the inertial dampness here, yeah, you can see 
there's quite a lot of recon. Alright. That's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Oh, I should probably mention what the ship is I'm shooting at. Uh, it's just a new ship I'm building. It's still going to take a long time. But I'll finish it eventually. Alright, thanks for watching. And see you soon. Bye.